Hello everyone. Good morning. Thank you for your gathering here in respect of this weather. <laughs> so today I'm going I'm going to talk about my work on identifying offensive videos on YouTube. So this was a work started with a research project titled Sci uh, Context Aware Harassment on Social Media, which was funded by NSF. Here is my outline for the rest of the talk. I will start with my introduction and uh, will go with some of the video sharing websites. And then I'll talk about what is offensive videos and why should we detect them. Later, we'll see some of the previous related works that are focusing on YouTube and also some other video sharing websites. Next, we propose our solution to detect these offensive videos using some machine learning algorithms, followed by our evaluations and conclusions of this work. So, I'm pretty sure that we use all, we use numerous video sharing websites in our daily basis, right? So, some of the popular video sharing websites include YouTube, Twitch, Vimeo, Dailymotion, etc. Here, millions of videos are uploaded on these video sharing websites on daily basis and people consume them according to their own purposes. Among these video sharing sites, YouTube is the largest and global sharing website that is highly used by people. So what's the issue with this videos here? The critical issue is that as millions of videos are uploaded every minute, there are some significant number of videos which are offending some religion, criticizing some rage, and there are also some videos that are making fun of disabled people, etc. So what's the big deal? What if there are some offensive videos? Before going that, we uh, will discuss some of the instances of these misuse. So these are some of the instances that were found on YouTube. The first video is about two girls who were suspended from school because of their YouTube upload. And the other example is about a sick boy who was bullied by his schoolmates. These are some of, like, like this, there are numerous uploads on YouTube. So what happens with these misuse? What happens if there are such instances in video sharing websites, here are the consequences. With these uploads on YouTube, many people were suspended from their school and some people were suspended from their work because of these uploads and even there are some cases where people were sentenced to jail for some months. On the other hand, there are also some instances where People got uh, offended by these videos, which led indirectly led them to commit suicide. So this is a critical problem that need to be solved. This consequences of misuse in various video sharing websites motivated me to detect them. So here is my problem statement. Finding uh, offensive videos that has some serious effect on people, and we define our we define the solution of this problem by detecting offensive videos using some machine learning algorithms. We find features that discriminates the offensive videos and non-offensive videos using some machine learning algorithms. With this motivation. I can define my thesis statement as offensive videos on YouTube can be identified by discovering reliable and efficient features gleaned from textual metadata associated with YouTube using machine learning algorithms. So before going to our approach, we define some of the related works that focuses on uh, detecting offensive users and also offensive text. These related works are broadly classified into two categories. The first, the first four works describes 
detection of offensive messages in various social media and the later works describe uh, detecting offensive videos so here are the four works that describes that and here are the works that describe offensive videos for now i'll be discussing two of the significant work one from offensive one from uh, offensive messages and one approach to detect offensive videos in the uh, offensive messages they are, are they all uh, tweet or some other kind of text uh, it's a uh, messages from youtube i mean the comments from comment yes in offensive videos we also <coughs> have a uh, on we also have some works on other video sharing websites hmm. so here is a work to detect offensive text this approach uses variations of dictionary that is strong offensive words and also weak offensive words for uh, for filtering offensive messages so that last message doesn't have to be offensive it may be it depends on what does it target so suppose it directly targets the recipient of the message it may be maybe it, it might be something sarcastic even if i yeah. say something right so it, it doesn't you, you but you mentioned that as an uh, this, uh, this approach detects that as offensive message oh that guy yeah. Yeah, this yes, guy yes yeah. existing approach so uh, the idea of this approach is that they first filter offensive words from a message they they try to see if there is any weak offensive or strong offensive word in their message if they find any if they find any of those words in the dictionary then they will filter those comments then they will your dictionary is the one that you send me no this is the existing approach they use their lexicon not the lexicon and some patterns there uh, so the idea behind this approach is that uh, first they detect offensive words if there are any then they filter those messages and they see that if there is association of a user identifier or a secondary pronoun with these offensive word then that message might be offensive for instance if you consider you stupid here uh, here we have you as a user user identifier or secondary pronoun which is associated with stupid that is a weak offensive word according to their lexicon so they treat this message as offensive message compared to game is stupid it doesn't have any user identifier right so they do not consider this as offensive message this way they filter all the offensive messages and they also consider that if a offensive word is associated with another offensive word that is more offensive than the previous one this way they detect all the offensive messages then this association uh, is done using stanford dependency parser then they then they collect all the offensive messages for a particular user to uh, to see if he is actually offensive or not so along with these offensive message values they also consider style features structure and content specific features to find if a user is offensive here style feature here by style features i mean that uh, the usage of punctuations the usage of uppercase letters etc and structure feature involves whether user is using some imperative sentences or any other uh, if the sentence is short or long and content specific feature uh, include some of the keywords of cyber cyberbullying keywords related to race religion intelligence disability so on. so this approach is using features to find offensive messages and also offensive users however this does not focus on finding offensive videos the next approach we are the next approach we are existing approach is finding bullying instances through video and text 
This study uses some. This study uh, uses a mobile network Vine to detect cyberbullying instances. Here, cyberbullying instances mean video along with the comments of that video. So they consider that as a uh, media section and detect if there are any such media sessions in a mobile application. So, uh, data collection on Vine, is it possible? Uh, is it open or uh, is it, how did they get that? They told that they use some API. They do? Yes. Okay. I think Vine is shut down right now. Oh. Yes. Because <laughs> 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 raised our hopes. <laughs> yeah. So this study uses Crowdflower, a crowdsourced website, to annotate the, their media sessions. So a sample of those annotations is here. They find if there are any such behavior in the whole media session, and then, and then, uh, they they just answer yes or no. After these annotations, they used features such as media, media session features, profile owner based feature, comment based feature, and engram based feature to find if there are to classify the cyberbullying instances. So this way, uh, they uh, they were able to detect instances in mind, but. Our work is different from our, uh, their work, where we use comments to detect offensive videos. They use offensive videos along with comments to find the cyberbullying instances, whether there are any cyberbullying instances or not. So, these are some of the previous works on video sharing websites and also on YouTube. Here are some of the limitations. So, existing works only look at comments and they treat all the same. I mean, there is no distinction between the comments and also the replies. If you see this example, the first message is a comment followed by replies. So, we say that these replies are consequence of these uh, consequence of ever message, and we need to consider both those. Me uh, we need to have a distinction between comments and also the replies because comments are more relevant to the video compared to the replies. Here, the first comment itself is, uh, you know, rather negative and then the second one is all negative on that one. Yes. How do we handle this? I think right now the point, I mean the takeaway that she wants to convey is that the first one is related to the original video about those two mm. girls going on a rant. Mm. But this is actually referring to mm. the other okay. comments. Yeah. Yeah. So these comments are only the one who will comment. Yeah. Yes. But you know, this we can only talk about offensive, not harassment. Yes. This is, this is only offensive content adaptation, it's not harassment. Because See, so harassment, 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 yeah, frequency issue, issue is the main thing for harassment. What, why, why, what, why, what's the, what's the I, distinction you mean? I think the harassment uh, would necessarily mean that you are psychologically affecting, behavior affecting somebody. Yeah, okay. So, so, and, and so there is no indication of that being here. There is no right. sustained, there is no, uh, you know, so it's just. Well, well, fair enough. It's just problem. one. It's one piece of the of mm. the process. Mm. See, the frequency aspect is something that we need to glean for proper harassment detection. Yeah, yeah. but there's something else here, which is how the how the receiver responds, yeah. and so, that so that ends up being a, a, now if, a part of the equation. If, for example, multiple people gang up on that guy, then that could the, rise to the harassment. Maybe, but we maybe. still don't know how Nonia one two three responds to mm -hmm. what that ganging up is mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. This is a really nice example. Yeah. This is a really and, critical uh, example. We can also say something like if offensive videos are have some frequency factor, if offensive yeah. videos are repeating, then we can say something that is really helpful. This, this, this is a nice example. So another limitation of this 
existing words is that they do not consider videos as source of harassment so i say that if we consider video as harassment then and if we are if and if we are able to flag those videos then we can eliminate all the comments that that will be existing like we can uh, eliminate all these conversations if we identify the actual source of harassment actual source of harassment so these are some of the limitations of existing work now with this background we can discuss our framework so our framework of detecting offensive videos is having four steps step 1 data acquisition data acquisition that is crawling youtube videos followed by step 2 identifying all extracting all the video features that are available to a particular video then we discover the efficient features that will solve our problem followed by classification that is whether a particular video is offensive or not now uh, is there any do you have any access to features related to the person posting it person uh, uh, is it part of just metadata feature uh, or we can we can crawl the history of a user hmm. a research work did that they crawl history of user to see if user is offensive or not and okay. harassing or not did you do that no we are mostly concerned with finding offensive videos rather than offensive users so yeah okay yeah but that's something that we should do i mean we said kind of propose we have both harassment and harassers Purpose also or, or no no our original or okay our purpose okay <laughs> so our framework here is the first step of of our framework crawling data from YouTube so we crawl we collected data from YouTube using YouTube data API that is available so uh, initially we started with random videos to find offensive to find whether video is offensive or not but with our observations we found that there are no uh, the data set doesn't have some significant number of offensive videos so we thought to enhance that data set and <clears throat> we use some keywords to enhance our data set and here are some keywords that we used this are the when you say using random stream these are the keywords you use or this no, is for the offensive uh, ones offensive ones but uh, why would you use random stream you would have to use some words right some words from dic- any dictionary we thought to have yeah, a generic data set so no not random stream i mean those are proper words proper words yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah those are proper words but, but it's just yeah. random stream random stream yeah. 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 so come on random stream is basically non harassing non offensive yeah. we started with basically compliment yeah. of these yeah. words right. yes right. Right, but it's not random right. things. It's yes. not no. Uh, how yeah. we uh, collected those yes, videos is that we generated a random string. Hey, I mean, it'll be proper lexicon words, right? No, no, no. It's it's not okay. X Y Z. Uh, I'm talking uh, about the random. I know, but are they? Did you use P Q B Z or did you use a real word? No. Uh, how I did is that uh, I. just randomly created a uh, i used a program to randomly generate a string and check if that is a valid string in youtube or not if there is a video id with that yeah. string or not no did so did you use the lexicon word yes yeah. no 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 so you yeah, no, 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 no. did not use dictionary words right you created a random string and so first so so your random string could be pound uh, uh hash uh, yeah. maybe yeah. Yeah. X. for random Uh, initially for random data set yes we use random strings and for uh, find for having offensive videos we used the lexicons okay. okay that is okay really yeah so i didn't realize that so i didn't realize that 
Yeah. Okay, okay, we will we'll get back to it as we wanted to continue. <laughs> All those hands get up here. <laughs> I think it's a random ID. So in YouTube videos, you have youtube.com and No, okay, okay. She has a clarification, I think. She generated random video ID. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Good. See how you need to be a little bit precise. <laughs> no, you scared me actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is how we created our data set. Now we annotated. Now we annotated our data set uh, use with human animators with the following questions. We asked, given a video ID, we asked them if that video is offensive to a community or not. And also we asked about the type of offense, if that is offensive. So here is a sample of video IDs and annotations. Uh, type of offense is manually tagged? Yes. Uh, we annotated we annotated. What are the type manually. of all what are all the type of offense that you have? These are the four types of These are offenses. Okay. I, I think basically she made people tag. We so think it was four, though, right? And I'm no, I don't think she constrained us. She just gave us a list of videos and said, "You give a label to this based on after watching." But then, then there will be unlimited type of labels. But yeah, so because she had limited videos, we had kind of made. No, did you, did you give no, that video will be specifically topic. Uh, if if I consider a gen gender related. Then that will be specifically. No, did you give this specific mm -hmm. four or you have something? No, I did not give any specific. So uh, then, what what happens if then people come up with uh, some other tags? Uh, you know, totally uh, arbitrary uh, label. Uh, we just want to know if that is offensive and related to what, related to what. We uh, but we did not use this type of offense. We uh, we just gave binary classification whether video is offensive. But our no, you, you, I'm talking about the last column. Tell me how did you, uh, how did you get that label? What labels were you, lim limit? did you limit among annotators to, if at all? Uh, I told them to give the general type of offense that is related to that. Okay, this is, this is what I remember. What she did was, she mailed us a spreadsheet with all some 40 video links. We were supposed to watch it and then uh, provide uh, a label of what is offensive about it and then will it be offensive just to me or, or to, to public at large yes but, uh, and, and but so basically she synthesized this based on maybe putting together all our labels okay so you I made you imposed this category structure on yes. what people no she didn't constrain me about the right. choice of label right but so once you... i provided my thing she so somebody, so you could have said this is criticizing evangelical Christians, yeah, and, and she, she would have said religion. Yes, religion. yes. yes. Right. Do you think this is going to be defensible? I mean, this this, this two-step annotation process could be... Eventually, but I don't think she really depends on it in her analyses, right? Yeah, at this, at this point, we were just trying to see what aspect is uh, kind of grabbing our attention and and is considered uh, harassing. So she didn't tell us, a priori she didn't bias us. Uh, yeah. So at the end, it's just the binary, right? Yeah. Yes. 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 She, yeah. So it doesn't affect her analyses. On the other hand, I think we do have to get over this problem of being lexically dependent in our categorization schemes, right? So, you know, unless you have evangelical Christian Muslim, you know, fundamentalist, whatever, unless you have that in your scheme, we're not able to pick these up. So we've really got to make that mapping from the lexicon to these categories in a formal way, I think. Uh, excuse me, did you ask your annotator to watch the whole of the movie and yes. also uh, read the comments? How was it? Not the comments, but I just told them to watch the video. Those videos were less than five minutes of length. So they watched the whole video and then they uh, commented whether that is offensive to a community or not. But it was still 40 videos or something like that. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, so they're not influenced by the comments. That's yes. No. Yes. And 
uh, these were these uh, this training set was annotated by he, four human annotators where uh, we got interchange agreement of 7.77 which is quite reasonable i guess so with this annotation we were able to get training and testing data sets we uh, we we distributed this training data set into this data set into training and testing data set here is the distribution of offensive and non offensive videos in both those data sets now we'll be going to the next step of our framework that is uh, extracting all the available feature youtube features for a video we extracted image features comment features and metadata features for a youtube video and we'll talk about each of these features in details now so image features image features are uh, the image frames of each individual video so these individual so the videos generally happen at any place at any time right it can it can have anything a video can have anything but from our experiments we found that offensive videos are more concerned with the verbal conversations or the discussions in the video rather than uh, the persons or the place where it happened can you can you clarify where that that assertion comes from i don't i don't remember the analysis that showed that <laughs> no i don't think it's entirely true <laughs> it's a good it's a it's a it's possible yes, yes. but from our training uh, from our data set we found that uh, there are all, um, almost all the videos offensive uh, that are offensive are uh, just concerned with what they speak in the video and what uh, the conversation yeah, yeah, is yeah. yeah. for example there may be a porn video and uh, they have disabled the comments mm -hmm. and they have not given any description this is all possible yes then in that case uh, we use metadata features no i think to i think you should probably factually i think we can say that it's processing video is completely <laughs> expensive and yeah. and so that was our primary e reason yes and this and this, this is also one of the factor that like what, uh, what would be the harassment and and of it I can the imagery of the video. Well, I I'm mm -hmm. I'm thinking of one image that caused a great uproar during the campaign. There was a it was a Trump advertisement that involved a Jewish star. And I, I don't remember the whole details, but I do know that it caused a big a big no, I mean, I concern. Can, so the, me, there's me images just, have right. No, I can just to falsify your claim, I can just say let's say a person is beating somebody with a stick. I mean, right? So I mean, that is offensive and that is harassment and everything. Yes, but but, but I mean, what I'm saying is that uh, acknowledge that there are benefits to that, and we think the computational aspect is the one that led us not to look at it. I think that's probably a fair statement. I also see and perception of the so uh, we see that. Yeah. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's a really good point that it, that that the Especially the interpretation the, of the image is a lot more dependent upon receiver inter, uh, processes. Yeah, for example, the racist yeah. uh, thing again, it will affect uh, you know the recipient certain discipline a lot more than somebody else. Yeah. So this this is, strikes me as a really interesting question, but not one that you were able to address in the in the. No, I think maybe we need to be more. Yeah. Yeah. One question. Uh, so, uh, YouTube now automatically provides closed captioning for some videos, not all yes, the time. Yes, yes. So, do you, like, can you access those closed captioning from... Uh, we, that, can, no? we can just access whether there are, ca uh, I mean, Boolean yeah. value, whether oh, captions yeah. are available yeah. or not, but not the transcript. Uh, the the <coughs> techniques to uh, capture the closed caption from the text are rather robust. I mean, it's possible, quite possible to capture, you know... Uh, these deep learning things, you know, they'll figure out very well how to capture the text from the post. The other day, someone was telling us that um, IBM has a mechanism for generating trailers for movies. Yes. Mm -hmm. Are they using images or are they using text? 
to do that? Does anybody, who, who, Im, they're using images. They're using images. Okay. They are using the speech recognition techniques to analyze the whole movie and then use that to create the trailer. Okay, so but it's still it's still text based. It's it's not Yeah, I mean they're, they're, so okay. they so they they do in image analysis too. I mean they didn't go into techniques in detail. They said they are using image analysis, they are also image okay. The image counter is a big manual. <laughs> yeah, so so the results were considered to be very good. Very uh, at very least the one they showed it was very interesting. I, I think there is uh, some videos online. Yeah, you can see them, and they're, they're supposed to be fairly good in you know, automatic generation tools. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and Sorry. another fact is that processing a video is expensive. So, for these reasons, we did not consider image feature for our analysis. The next feature was the comment features. We crossed comments and also the replies for each YouTube video. And we, uh, we discovered that comments are highly relevant to the content. I mean, uh, here, this is the comment and this is the reply, right? So we discovered that comments are more relevant to content while the subsequent... Can, can we, uh, uh, are we allowed to use any identifiable personal images? Oh, my oh, channel. Is a no, yeah, you should you should change the the usernames yeah, in anything that you. So maybe we'll black it out. Yeah. yeah. You might have or just uh, I usually just perturb it. You know, so. Yeah, you, you just need to blur all of these things. In fact, you. Oh, also the video images. No, because. That's well, the pictures. What about the pictures? But I think that person's uh, thing should be blurred out. You can take that picture and possibly search on the web and get to that person also. Yeah. So technically it may be possible, right? Because you can yeah. also your profile information yeah. available and you can do just map matching. Yes. So you basically want non in anybody non identifiable right now. There is no value for us to talk about the thing. Okay. The other thing is essentially um, you guys need to develop sensitivity. For example, I would not use this example. Yeah. So it's it's a not a um, uh, you, you have to learn answers, we have to all learn, okay? So this is not a good example to use, just for the audience we have. So uh, we discovered that comments are highly relevant to the content of video, mm -hmm. but the subsequent replies are uh, just quarreling among the commenters. They are less relevant to the content of videos. Mm -hmm. For this reason, we considered only comments and ignored all the replies. So, in order to incorporate these features, oh, in order to incorporate these features in our feature set, uh, we computer sentiment and engrams of the comments. We use sentiment because these abstract some offensive related information about the video. So we use sentiment, and we computed sentiments using Alchemy API. Then we aggregated the number of all positive and negative comments per a YouTube video. Mm. Then n-grams. Uh, mm. We extracted unigrams and bigrams of each comment, and then after pre-pro, we extracted n-grams and bigrams mm. after pre-processing them, and we and use this feature for our classification. Mm. Now, the other feature that we used in our framework is metadata feature. Metadata features are nothing but characteristics of a video which is uh, uh, which is irrespective of comments below that video. So here are some metadata features that we used. We used title, description, channel title, duration, counts of video, that is the number of likes, dislikes, views, YouTube category. Here, YouTube category can be any of the 15 general categories of YouTube, such as entertainment, news, politics, sports, something like that. And uh, we also use licensed content. In general, YouTube, uh, YouTube videos has any of the two licensed content. It may be standard or uh, creative comments. 
so we used if this if this has any impact on finding offensive videos along with these features we also use privacy privacy status of a video which can be public private or unlisted which you are able to get on this uh, private uh, we can just get uh, whether the video is private public or unlisted but if it's private you are not going to be able to get any way from your api we can uh, it just says we uh, we we uh, will not be able to see those private videos by by crawl yeah and you not have any meter it also why would why the, the so the is not give you any private videos so yeah. it, it's not that the mpeg part not the effective feature huh yes yeah yes. so we do you get title for private video doesn't make sense uh yes you just go you, you get, get any you videos get titles yeah. for private videos We we will get metadata for a private video. No, how can you get metadata? Suppose I put up my family, my child's video, and I make it private. It's not searchable. Your API would just not give you. We cannot see the content of video. You when cannot I... see metadata for the video either. What what is the point? If I can show yeah, you all the metadata, yeah, yeah. you just can't. I'm sorry. What we observe is that offensive videos are all public, but. they can be offensive no, you, videos you know, that are that. private no you you may see the id and yeah. private or something but like you said probably other information should not be should not be available that's one reason yeah we can get id but that doesn't give you anything those videos are simply yes. not something that you can use in as part of your study but you said the metadata are, are available even if it's private no probably no, no i just said that we uh, we got this privacy status to see if there are any other videos i think what you have the feature uh, selection thing so if the feature is not always effective it's going to be throw it away yes. no if, if the video is private title is not available description is not available right yes okay and for uh, some videos uh, we if the comments are disabled then we did not get comments either for most offensive videos we found that uh, comments are disabled for that video and for that we did not get comments and we just used metadata that is perfectly fine but when the video is specified as unlisted or private you or api should not be able to find the message for us that um i i wonder why this conversation is important and the the specific question that i have is does this mean because we're excluding videos that are private Does this mean that metadata is less likely to be a discriminating feature? No, basically, on, on basically, videos? basically, it means that privacy status as a feature is not usable. So okay, it so it's not usable. It's simply you would not have all the videos in her mm-hmm. corpus must be public video. Public. Okay, yeah. but that but that's the only that's the yeah, only that issue. That it's just be taken out saying privacy okay. status is okay. not relevant because you can't have other private status. But it doesn't mean that the it doesn't threaten the the, the, the it, relevance of the no, other. No, I think ones. the way I read it the the was all the features available and then she will use only a subset of them. Okay. Yes, I will not use all of these features. I just said that these are the all available features for a video, okay. YouTube video, and then we will uh, discover the efficient features that solves our problem. so uh, with all the features that we discussed in previous step we performed some experiments using name pairs and smm classifiers and here are some of the effective combinations we tried with each individual uh, feature and then combined with other features so on a whole we have 19 combinations and these are some of the best combinations from these experiments here are uh, here is the summary of, of of our experiments we discovered that sentiments uh, cannot uh, cannot have significant impact when compared to unigrams so this is because sentiments cannot distinguish negative videos and offensive videos that's the reason we we do not see that in, we do not see a significant in, impact on the performance of classifier Uh, another observation was that <coughs> metadata features in particular title description channel title were effective when compared with the counts or numeric features we also found that youtube category is a good indicator uh, to find offensive videos oh sorry youtube category 
Yes, uh, the broad classification of uh, YouTube videos. So, so what category then, was uh, yeah. indicative of offensive? Of offensive uh, the offensive videos were broadly classified as peoples and blogs, entertainment. Entertainment? Yeah. Uh, the... Hmm. So here is the evaluation of our, the, of our features that were discriminating. With the features that were discriminating from the previous step, we, we so, performed. So should you know, first we should have been trying it. I think she should have tried all other right through Veka. Did you experiment with other classifiers? Yes, but did, these yeah. are the best so ones. So best. I just uh, display only those. So. Uh, and there was. What was what you present the base size? Is all your feature selection work? Yes, a uh, discovery of efficient features and mm. the some analysis of those features why why they were effective. Is there anything interesting about this? Yeah? I mean, the only salvageable thing is that simple features did. I mean, the like adding features beyond these don't significantly. No, but this it. basically says that you don't need comments to get the best results. No, you yeah, don't need the, the second the, set of com the, the, the subsequent mm -hmm. comments. Oh, well, no, three. even title is number probably three, the most number indicated. Three, yeah. okay. Did not use comments. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, oh title, that's true. Title that's true. Is yes. uh, but yeah. finally, I used title with all the metadata features that was decreasing the uh, uh, performance right. of classified. Right. Yeah. So, so, so no comments. Ta 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 yeah. Title and metadata is all that matter. Not, no, mm -hmm. no, no, no content was useful. Mm -hmm. right? Counts were also uh, not that discriminating because the video can uh, can be published at any time. Mm. So those were also not. Who po who posts the title? Who gives <coughs> it? The person who posts the video puts yes. the title on. Yes. Mm. So they mm. declare whether it's. <laughs> they basically declare whether or not it's offensive. Mm. Well, the the, the the occurrence of certain mm. thumbs must be indicative. Yeah. They, they, the thumbs themselves may not be harassing, and yet like that sick boy is uh, wearing, wearing uh, harass because he was wearing turban, or two girls going on a rant. I mean, like so the, the word like, uh, the okay. word like rant might uh, mm. affect. The word like so then, some affect. the person that's posting it is is posting it not to be offensive, but to demonstrate yeah. uh, the so, prevalence of offensive... So maybe the actors are not necessarily the ones who are posting it. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Some third party has taken the video and is making it public to say that it would be... To object, to protest. Right. So here is our evaluation with different, uh, different classifiers. So we, we tested our features with uh, unseen data, unseen test data with 86 video IDs, and here is the performance. We can see that SVM is a better classifying compared to name page. And here is the confusion matrix for the best classified algorithm. So do you have titles for all these videos? Maybe you should have both shown those examples. In fact, I would be interested in seeing those cross ones. I think we should have done that. I think show uh, cited examples of titles. Because you showed comments, but they are not useful. So yes. I think we should have yeah. seen the narrative. But the titles are the comments. The way we've been so, talking about it, the titles are somebody's interpretation hmm. of the offensiveness mm -hmm. of, this, so of this video. Mm -hmm. No, but they did not use the title when they annotated the data. No, I, I know that, yeah. but, but her classifier yes. picks up on, yeah. the, on the titles. So here are some of the conclusions of our work. We proposed an approach to filter offensive videos that have a serious effect on people's lives. And 
For this approach, we experimented with different features such as common feature, metadata, base features, and discovered that metadata features are more reliable compared to common base features. For this analysis, we used a training dataset of 300 videos and test dataset of 36 videos and obtained a decent F score of 0.86. So here are some potential so why was why was testing data not much larger? It could have been oh. easily it could have easily you know done testing on three hundred videos rather than six videos. So problem is that it was very time consuming to find these offensive videos. So you only found three hundred eighty six so in your work? Yes, in a time span of one month these are the uh, videos that were annotated because as you know, offensive. Because many of you have many yes. identifiers yes. potentially higher as seen. Yes. Or potentially rather offensive. Hmm. Yes. Hmm. So, uh, in our work, we restricted to English comments. So, we can expand this work and analyze multilingual text so that that may be more effective compared to only. English comments. No, I think it may be just because you, okay, so you use all those uh, words and you found all these videos. Yes. But it's possible that those words are not very, uh, the off words for offensive, potentially identifying offensive, not may not be very good. Maybe you will not use slangs or something. Is that, is that something there? Or did That's you extend it? Entirely. I mean, did you go to Urban Dictionary and just uh, extend them out by Urban Dictionary? I think that's, you know, that, that would be a simple way to check out because people are not going to use, very likely to use, you know, uh, their urban dictionary counterparts or your, oh, their, you know, and then, you know, just uh, extending them out would give you much wider thing. Yeah, okay, so maybe they try so that. Yeah. I did not use urban dictionary, but I used variations of these so words to identify how, more. How did you get those variations? Like if there is some, uh, if there is a sentiment, sensitive word like race, racism, racial slang. No, but uh, but but uh, how many? Just tell me how many uh, variations of nigger did you find? Uh, Lou also sent me a list of profane words previously okay. for my work. Okay. So I use some of those variations where it has. But slang. the point is that you identify those four types of uh, offensive things. Yes. For each of those types, you should uh, put in a four to find variety of words: racial, religion. There will be offensive words. You you need to argue that for each of the type of offense you're talking about, you did the best to. Uh, I use all the words uh, as keywords to search for the videos. So, uh, how do you do that? Tell me. Yeah, I used some of those profane words and also some sensitive keywords, what I found. But it would be better if we use some lexicons uh, related to religion, race, gender to get more uh, to get more offensive videos and to enhance our data set then that lexicons will be really useful. So, can you make use that, of lexicons? Uh, yes, yes. You don't, the point is, I, you done a thesis, you can't say that that will be, you've got to do it. Can't be, will we, be. We search for lexicons, but every work uses its own lexicon and we could not get their lexicons. You could not? No. I, I, I oh, tried yeah, I to... I could have asked Valerie, I mean, she could have pointed to things. I, I tried to email those papers, but there was no... There are some they are proper dictionary words uh, they are not uh, I didn't see the uh, colloquial and uh, you know um, urban words uh, I didn't see them street words why do we That's think it. that the results would be different I, I certainly understand the point but why do we think that the general conclusions about what the relevant no, features that, are. But I think maybe, uh, I think we should probably try and see whether it's similar. Sure. At, at the end yeah. of the day, testing of uh, 86 videos is not a Okay, not so a you're very worried that number. the samples is so small because yeah. of the restricted yeah. vocabulary. Yeah. No, but I would, I would still, I think he's a good point that I think I want to see whether it gives you more videos or, or not. Maybe it, it may not significantly give if people in the title use reasonable 
Some you say you found it worth thousand, trying it and then checking it. If out. you say you found ten thousand videos and you sample from that because that's all you can do in terms of uh, uh, when you're working involved, that's defensible. But you say you found some total of three hundred eighty-six uh, video and uh, uh, offensive video on entire YouTube is not defensible. That, yeah, that is the same one. Okay. So um, also see the CFO that you use the uh, don't show the extreme offensive. <laughs> Yeah. They are kind of. Yeah. Uh, they are. They are. They, yeah. They. They seem to be rather tame birds. I have a question. Yes. You have used the uh, disappearing birds from when you had this one. Yes. Yes. So I so think it is. You think it's okay? You can defend it. No, I have to say that uh, I think I'm we, going to now challenge you to improve upon this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, the fact is that uh, Lou was uh, initially the one who helped us with the crawling and other things, and uh, even as far as the evaluation was concerned, after we discovered it was 0.83, we checked with her, and she said that yeah, that's hard to. Improve so we had her feedback, which we yes, thought was no, it, 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 yeah, I, I, I can totally buy that the 0.83084 is hard to improve, and that, that's perfectly fine, right? But no, but we should have tried this and for, then said, you know, uh, it, you know, sell it for any you know possible publication, that sample size is just appears to be too small. But I would like to basically say that uh, after enhancing. With these keywords, does it substantially improve your data set? If it does, then we need to improve. Otherwise, we can at least say that it did not yeah, uh, improve and then right. claim that the title don't use those words. Or something. I mean, Sa Saida's point is, is really <laughs> the issue here. If the selection by sampling, you actually excluded videos that would have been more offensive and would have identified other features. That's the, the key issue. Yeah, because I saw that some really offensive messages or nasty messages are very extreme. They're using very extreme actually. I, I think all of them are words that were not in the uh, yeah. uh, tech cloud. Thing. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sure we can. But the question is, does it make a difference? And that's what I think yeah. Saida is, is picking up on. For example, I didn't see for, uh, sexual orientation centric. Thing. Did, did, uh, did I miss them? No. We are finding offensive to a large community. And Sexual we, orientation is very <laughs> offensive to a large community. <laughs> Come on. I mean, I mean you, you really have to get LGBTQ related things if you want any offensive things. I mean, you can't. That's a one, one of the most serious component of it. So, so huh. yes, religion, race, um, uh, you know, uh, but... Uh, uh, you know, we could really interest. improve our data set if we have a proper lexicon. Exactly, but you yes. have to have it because that's something required. Okay, um, anyway. One question actually. In your uh, reviewing uh, related board, you mentioned that some of the existing board using syntactic analysis like dependency parser, yes. functions. Yes. How well did you perform? Was it successful? Uh, they use that just to see if if uh, it has some impact, and there was not much impact, but there was Im uh, influence of classifier by two percent. Yeah. Yeah. So here are some <coughs> here are some potential possibilities of future work. Uh, we can use different lexicons so that we can enhance our data set, which, which uh, further we can subclassify offensive videos related to disability, gender, religion, and so on. And uh, we can also use the transcripts of audio, uh, transcripts of a video to improve performance and classifier, but this is again expensive because we, all, uh, we need to pro 10% of the videos we have the transcripts. If we want transcripts, we have to again perform that analysis, uh, processing of video, which is again expensive. Like no, no transcripts is not expensive. It's text, right? Uh, it's, closed caption is expensive. Yes. The transcripts, if they are available, that's not expensive. That's text. Yeah. 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 No, are transcripts available? 
for not for all uh, videos. No, of course not at all. Yes. But you know, I would uh, you know suppose I could I would do a sub uh, set of hundred and look and say, can you really improve on that? That would be interesting, right? A sub is a yeah, yes, getting transcript if you can, yeah, that would be. Uh, is it accessible through the API? See, that's what I'm wondering. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, because transcript would obviously have all the words that are. Much no, more no. I believe that there should be open source tool that will simply uh, uh, take any uh, audio from a video and give you the transcript with errors, but that's good enough for what you're doing. Yeah, there are tools that yeah. will give you. I used it in nine, year two thousand, in the you know tally thing. So, can you go back to your results slide, the, the one that shows the different? No, no, not that one. Back, back, back. There we go. Okay. So, are you relying? Is is, is, the, the, is the final answer then the the metadata data features line? Is that the one you're You're yeah. emphasizing. So then, you know, the conclusions about the about the comments, the first comments and the subsequent comments, is irrelevant, right? It's really yes. this is really all about the metadata, metadata. We, features. I okay. just want to claim that we tried with. <laughs> okay. So so it seems to me that this is a special case of crowdflower. Because Crowdflower is, as I understood it, is yes. explicitly asking people to categorize or rate the, the video. But what's happening here is that people are freeform putting their putting the titles on the video and and telling you that that it that is that the video is offensive. Yes. Okay. Crowdflower is a website that uh, we pay and annotate. Yes. Get but, annotated. but you're getting annotations here for free because people put the titles on, and the and apparently the claim is that people are accurate in titling the video. Yeah, the limited data. Yeah. Yeah. That's what that's what's going on here. And these videos are not themselves being used to harass, which is our long-term goal on the harassment project, but rather these videos are statements uh, by the population, by viewers, that something is offensive. It's a sort of a second step in, in, in the process. Yeah, so weaker than harassment. Yeah, it is. It's, I mean, it's or, or it's the complement of harassment or something. It's you know this this thing could be harassing. So we can't use this technique to identify videos that don't have user imposed titles on them, declaring that they are offensive. Yeah, that's that's what this depends on. And then not all the time. And the content, I mean, it's very scientific. Hey, I mean, harassment and all the concepts are everywhere. You read the book and you will find that something that is gonna make you sick, you know. Especially, especially news, for example, nowadays. Uh, that's why I avoid watching news. Yeah. <laughs> but, this, but this technique is still relying on somebody to evaluate the video and tell you that it's harassing. It's just that the evaluation is in the title. We still haven't really sort of cracked the, 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 yeah. the problem. I mean, it's still good, especially if you could go back and trace, the, if there was an ID on that video and you could go back and trace how it's been disseminated and you know who's, who's consuming it. But it's just, it's just another case of crowd flower. I would like to thank Dr. Prasad, my advisor, for all his motivation and for all his time. And I also thank Dr. Shaif and 
Dr. Shalom for all the effort to go through my talk. You should have invited Jack and yeah. Last but not least, I want to thank all the Noises family and in particular my harassment family. Hey, we need to thank Lou in particular. I mean, she really guided you in the beginning. Thank you, Emma. Harassment family. All the harassers. Tormentors. <laughs> okay. Did you say tormentor? Yes. I was okay. tormenting. Okay, I didn't. First, I heard a mentor, and then I thought, no, you said oh, mentor. Tor, tor. Mentor. <laughs>